Today's video is going to start with a question. Have you ever been on a vacation? More importantly, have you been ever been on a vacation that has required you to take stuff? This is Tim2716, and today is a new video. A new video in my automation BeamNG Drive series. The vehicle we're reviewing today, I didn't have any building video of it, but it's pretty similar to another truck that you may have seen before. If you've seen my previous video involving trucks, you've probably saw a tug of war. This right here is the successor to the victor of said tug of war, with four turbos, 13.2 liter V12, and all the power and torque you could ever want. This thing is basically unstoppable. Those wheels, yeah, those are 25 inch wheels. Told ya. Oh, and they're made of steel, because why not? Their utility, they're super wide for all the traction you could ever want, and that should give you an idea of just how big this thing is. Yeah, this thing, according to automation, is about 20 feet long. In fact, it's a little longer. This is the engine itself in its full glory. Oh, that beautiful metal. The beautiful engine itself. Four turbos, 12 cylinders, and... That much displacement. And also, we can't forget about the 6,711 newton meters of torque. We just can't forget about that. Anyway, I think I'm about to start it. It's better than the predecessor because of torque, fuel economy, and a whole lot of other stuff. Now, let's test it. That was a pretty good run of testing it and all that. It has race headers, like every engine I've made. I think it looks wonderful, to be honest. Now, this truck right here has a pretty big grill with pretty big headlights, so I'm going to take a guess they're like 7 inches in diameter each. Because if those wheels are 25, those are big headlights. Tail lights are pretty cool. It has the name of it and the name of the company on the back. Here are some of the specs, 15,706 pound capacity, 17,203, horrible drag coefficient, really heavy, 144 miles per hour, 4.4 seconds 0 to 60, not too bad for a vehicle this heavy, but kind of lackluster for something with this much power. With nearly 5,000 horsepower, you'd expect that. A little over a million dollars to build, and... 8.5 miles to the gallon, which is slightly better than the predecessor. And oh, this truck actually meets a lot of demands for certain things. So I think they like it a lot. The interior is of basically maximum quality. It's made a little bit lower quality for weight purposes to make it a little heavier. So it doesn't fly off the ground and stuff like that. Because we don't want flying trucks, especially when they weigh almost as much as full-sized SUVs. Actually, when they weigh more than full-size SUVs. The interior is vastly improved, as there's actually multiple new textures in this car. The paint itself is a lot better. As we get rid of the windows, we can see a shifter, which is pretty cool, a cool dashboard, some really cool seats, and some recurring materials in there that come back to see light again. Yeah, just, I, I just really like this truck. Its color is wonderful. The whole design is wonderful. I just love everything about it. The little fuel tanks are cute. And now, let's go to BeamNG Drive. We are currently in BeamNG Drive right now with my Torque Master and the Tuo Muso. This should give you an idea of just how big this truck is. And as I said earlier, those are 25-inch wheels. Specifically, the rims are that big. But yeah, this thing is massive. Absolutely gigantic. I believe it has like 22 inches of ground clearance or something like that. Which is just absolutely ridiculous compared to the car next to it. Which, from bumper to bumper, 
I don't even think that the rear of the Tuomuso makes it back all the way to the rear of the cabin in the Torque Master, which that gives you an idea just how big it is. Also, the Tuomuso is about 13 feet long, by the way. So that means that bed back there is about seven and a half feet long or so. And yeah, that trailer right there has a ton of water in it. Why? Because we're going to bring it to the very end of this and prove that this is a good truck for vacations. And oh, oh no. I think this is actually a bit too much. I don't know if the truck has good enough traction or anything like that, but just, just, this is just embarrassing. We're basically trying to get it to go as fast as possible, but it's struggling. We got all that torque and it's not working. Why? Just why? This is making me sad. Oh no. Oh no, we're probably gonna have to switch out the trailer anyway, because that trailer back there, yeah, that's 33,000 liters of water. I actually got it wrong. That trailer is actually 39,166 kilograms. Now, we're at a different trailer, one that's much lighter and much more manageable to, to realistically move. I think it would be safe to say that this trailer does not want to be pulled up this ramp, so yeah, we're gonna have to make it lighter in order to get it pulled up, and I'm gonna speed it up. It might take a little while, so yeah. Let's just change the trailer. Let's change what's in it. Let's make the front end a little lighter so it can actually have a chance of pulling it. And yeah, once we get it up here, we're gonna weigh it. With only about half of the trailer actually on the scale, I'm just gonna assume that fully loaded with steel pipes, this thing weighs about 55,000 pounds in total, which I think is just enough for this truck. But yeah, we're probably going to have it a little bit lower like this. Maybe I'll make it fully loaded, but right at the moment, probably weighs about 45,000 pounds right now. So hopefully, if we get it fully loaded, we can get to towing it down the road, and eventually we can reach the end of this map. And now, our journey begins. Our journey of at least 30 kilometers begins, or however long this map is. I don't even know anymore. It was a long time when I read it. Yeah, as we struggle to accelerate, we can see our Tuo Muso friend right there, just waving us on and cheering us on, happy that we're going to make our journey. We're probably not going to make it to the end, though. We're probably just going to stay there, to be honest. And why should they make it to the end? We're going to take so long, they're probably going to get impatient. And as of right now, I just want to say something. The zoo was supposed to be uploaded earlier, but due to timing issues and stuff like that, I couldn't get it uploaded. And also, this video is dedicated to someone. Specifically, the video is dedicated to 8-Bit Bowser Jr. 7432. They're a content creator that I'm actually pretty good friends with in real life, and one thing I would like to say, if you want, you may check them out, and I'd recommend giving them a subscribe, because, well, their channel's a lot smaller than mine, and I just want to help them out mainly. So yeah, if you want to check them out, I'd highly recommend it. So as we get back to the driving right here, we can see that it is not easy to keep this thing going straight. In fact, it's actually quite hard to do so. Sometimes you drift into the grass, staying in one lane is basically impossible, and just staying on the right side of the highway is impossible, basically. We need to take this thing all over the place in order to make sure this thing doesn't just go into the woods. Also, another thing I want to say real quick is just, we are not going very fast at this thing. That should give you an idea of just, this thing is not supposed to go fast, especially with that much weight at the back. And, okay, I wonder which side of the trees I should go on. Should I go on the side, that side or that side? You know what? I'm going to keep going, um, yeah, I'm going to keep going straight the way I'm on. Okay. Oh, don't want to hit that sign. Okay, let's just cross over to probably the other side of the highway, go under the bridge. Luckily, our trailer of steel pipes is of low enough clearance that it can go under these bridges. And now that I think about it, this is still really cool. Just the fact that we're able to do this, and I found this mod in Beam and G Drive. 
I think it's pretty cool. So yeah, you can take all your cool stuff and things like that. I think this is a ridiculously awesome trip, by the way. I love this map. I might have it in the description for if you want to download it on Beam and G Drive. But yeah. Oh no, our truck is getting a little unstable. Hopefully that's not a good thing. Hopefully that's not a bad thing. Oh no, oh no, Mayday, Mayday! I call Mayday! We are certainly stuck right here. Oh no. That is a jackknife trailer if I've seen any of it. And just, wow. Considering this thing has two axle pivot things, two points where this thing can jackknife at, that makes it even worse somehow. That means this thing, the truck could be in the complete opposite direction from the trailer, which would make it horrible. And now we have to do this on grass, which is just a nightmare. We're barely going any fast at all. We're just, oh my, we're struggling to gain speed. And just, I'm just, I can't believe this actually happened. With a normal semi-truck, this probably would have never happened. But yeah, this is why semi-trucks are used, and despite this, I'm still impressed that we're able to even do this at all, because this truck doesn't have a double axle at the rear, this truck doesn't have dualies, nor does it have a double dually rear axle, and yeah, that is what the truck looks like through those steel pipes. And currently, we're gaining some speed, but I don't think we can get to 60. It, yeah, that trailer is definitely doing something to the suspension, holding the truck down, and yeah, I'm just going to say, it's probably nearing its load capacity, specifically at the end. Everywhere else is kind of fine. So yeah, as we watch through the pipes, we can see that it's not a comfortable ride. It's probably very bouncy. There's probably a lot of motion sickness involved. So I'm just going to say that, yeah, just get a semi truck instead. This is not a good way to spend your money. As I saw in automation, this thing is about a million dollars is the estimated unit price so yeah you'd actually be better off buying a semi truck because they're about 200,000 at most usually but if you want like the really big ones those are like 400,000 some of them are like half a million but those are like the really big ones that you and like another person can live inside of and drive around the country in or drive around the world in depending on if you have a passport and stuff like that Oh, and I also forgot to mention something. The trailer alone that I'm hauling weighs more than this truck. This truck is about a little under 7,600 pounds. That trailer, without the steel pipes, is about 4,500 kilograms, or a little over 9,000 pounds. So, yeah, I think the, we should at least give this truck some slack, because it's not designed to do this. It's pulling a trailer made for semi-trucks. It's weaving through lanes and through highways and all sorts of stuff. It's weaving through the grass medians. It's kind of embarrassing how this is doing. I thought it would be so much smoother. But other than that, it's actually doing pretty good. It's keeping a speed of about 35 miles per hour, maybe 30. Sometimes it goes lower, sometimes it goes higher, but... Yeah. Thing is, this map in particular has a bridge, and I remember reading that this is like a 30 by, like a 30 kilometer bridge. So, or I don't think the bridge itself is 30 kilometers. I think the whole map is 30 kilometers long. So yeah, this is gonna be a pretty long drive. Not for you guys, since I'm gonna speed up the video. In fact, like for the past couple of minutes that you've been watching, it's been at 1.5 speed. Yeah, it's in sped up that because I don't want to make this video like over an hour long and oh, whoa. Yeah, you have to be careful when parking this thing, especially if you have a trailer behind you because you can't do abrupt braking, and, well, it's going to be kind of hard to go across this bridge. But personally, let's just see how our progress is. And, oh, no! 
Yep, we have all that to make. I am not, absolutely not, going to be towing this thing with a fully loaded trailer because that would take like an hour to get across this bridge alone. And we're already using so much fuel. Like, it is just a huge, huge amount of fuel we're using. I think that we should obviously make this thing lighter and that we should just go across the bridge quickly. Maybe one thing of steel pipes is all we need for the bridge. But yeah, when we make it lighter, I think it'll be much, much better. After readjusting the load of the trailer, I think that we are now ready to go across this bridge and... Okay, acceleration is a whole lot faster on this. And just to give you an idea just how long this bridge is, you can't even see the other piece of land from this far away. So I'm going to take a guess that this bridge is like about... I, I don't actually know how long this bridge is. I'm going to take a guess it's like maybe... I want to say like 12 miles long or so. That's assuming the whole map is 30 kilometers, which is about 18.6 miles or so, which is a pretty long distance, to be honest. And, oh gosh, we cannot drive this thing straight to save my life. Like, I don't even know how we're gonna even, like, I don't even know how we're gonna drive this thing straight, and hey, at least we made it to 60 miles per hour, and oh no, we're crashing into the walls, that means we're gonna have steering issues and stuff like that, oh gosh, no, okay, oh, I think we reached 80 for a short time, but yeah, we are currently 1.2, 1.3 miles out according to the odometer, and I I think we're going to be pretty close to reaching the first of many little spots that can technically be used as rest stops and stuff like that. Okay, we reached 90 for a short time. Okay, we're at some signs. Yep, there's one of the aforementioned rest stops I mentioned, which is basically where you can pull your vehicle over and do maintenance on it if you need to. And, well, two miles out. We're two miles out already. I think we're, we're doing pretty good good on this bridge for especially for towing 25,000 pounds or so maybe 30,000 I'm not entirely sure how much weight that is I'm gonna assume it's closer to 25,000 oh wait now that I think about it it's actually probably like 27 because that is half of the weight of the steel then there's the trailer weight and all that yeah it's a little complicated I didn't intend for this view have so much math in it but yeah basically we're just gonna keep on driving until we reach the end and yeah that little oh no yeah that is why i said this is so much more dangerous than just having one pivotal point on your trailer that is what i call a 180 jackknife and just wow yeah Oh, no. This is going to be so awful. Why did I have to make this truck so big? Why? Well, you know what? At least I can say something. This is still smaller than most American pickup trucks. That's all I'm going to say. It's still smaller than most of them, because apparently everyone in the United States likes their giant Super Duty trucks. Now we've cut to the going back into normal. We have less weight, and this time it's more in the middle. Yeah, this time I opted for about 15,000 pounds of combined weight. Actually, no, it's more like 16,000, but still. I opted for this, because I would much, much rather not jackknife, and much rather get here quicker, even if it makes the video shorter, and I'm sorry about that, I'm actually really sorry about it, I do not want to do this, I don't want to make the video feel rushed or overly quick, but I don't want to spend like an hour on this bridge in real life, or while making the video for you guys, I want to make this quick enough for you guys to enjoy, but I don't want to make it too much of a slog for me either. And you know what, since we've been on this bridge for about four minutes or so, I think that we should at least try to speed up this footage some, because 
this footage as I'm editing it is about 20 minutes of just being on the bridge. Just 20 minutes of being on the bridge, even at like 90 miles per hour. And oh, this is not that first time. That is not the last time we're gonna jackknife. I'm just gonna say that. That is not the last time. Like, that's to my knowledge, though. I'm just editing this. I don't entirely remember what happens in the videos I edit. I usually just usually just play the game, then I upload them to uh, Dropbox, usually send them to my phone, because that's where I do my voiceovers and reporting stuff like that. And I just think it's easier to edit on my phone, because I don't have to deal with, like, I don't have to deal with not having a, a good quality microphone available, because my gaming computer doesn't have a microphone to speak of, and my laptop, um, the microphone on it is not very very good, to say the least. So yeah, as we're gonna speed up this video, I'm just gonna say something about this. At some point, I'm gonna check how far out we are and just explain to you just why this bridge's length is so impressive. Currently, we're at about two times speed right now. And yeah, I figured out, yeah, this is how far out we are and we can't see either piece of land. So this bridge is pretty darn long, to say the least, because the average human at sea level can see about five kilometers out or about three miles before the horizon just bends to the point where you can't see past it. That's because the Earth is obviously a sphere because it's not a disk. The reason why it's not a disk is because I'm fairly certain just the spinning motion of the Earth is so strong that a disk of our planet's size wouldn't be able to stay in one piece and just stay, keep its shape. That's basically why an Earth that's flat can't exist. It wouldn't be able to keep its shape, and at some point, we are going to see the island at some point, the other side, and I hope we see it, because this is gonna be a pretty cool little place. I believe there's like a toll booth and stuff like that, and wait a minute. No, I can't see anything. I think that was just a sign I saw for like a highway marker. Now we're back to coasting at about regular speed. Currently we're at about 90 miles per hour, pulling about, I want to say about 17,000 pounds of weight. Maybe 16 or 15, I'm not even sure at this point, but if you look in the distance, you can see something. Yep, that is the piece of land we're going to. We have reached Narnia. We have reached the other side of the world, and... Yeah, I'm just gonna slow down just to give you an idea of just the fact that we... Yeah, there's... Uh, now I just remember there is a toll booth up there, and I'm going slow because this thing has a lot of weight, and despite being a whole lot lighter than the double steel pipe trailer, I don't want to jackknife by turning a little bit. And, yeah, this is a pretty dangerous configuration for our truck. But, yeah, once we actually make it to there, this is going to be so cool. Hopefully, we don't actually jackknife or anything like that. Hopefully, this trailer stays in one piece. Hopefully, the little bogey thing in between the truck and the trailer doesn't disconnect from either. And, hopefully, hopefully, we make it to the end safely without running out of gas, because I'm not refueling the fuel tank. Or I might, I'm not sure. But yeah, there are a whole lot of things. Oh no! I gotta fix this. So yeah, that right there was actually the second jackknife incident I mentioned earlier. And I'm just gonna say something, we're probably gonna have another thing happen, knowing my luck, and... Uh, Okay, just looking at the tool booths, there is no way we are fitting this truck that is a little over seven feet wide through it. There is no way we are doing that. Absolutely not. So we're just going around it. Absolutely not. We are not going through it. Oh, I recognize those signs in the Autobahn. That means no speed limit. Now that we have our steel beams in, let's go. Hello, no such thing as a 0 to 60 acceleration. 
Hello, top speed of about 30 miles per hour. And hello, horrible fuel consumption. Oh, and I'm not... Yeah, I did not refuel my fuel tank. So, we're gonna keep going, and we're gonna keep trying to get to the end. Hopefully, this is only about another two miles or so. I hope it is, because I do not want to drive for another ten or so miles. Especially with the steel pipes. In fact, that is actually why I made the bridge such a quick journey. This right here, it's going to be in painfully agonizing real time. Actually, no, it's actually slightly sped up, but still, this is close to real time right here, what you're looking at. In fact, actually, no, I think it's about um, 1.2 sped up or something like that. Like, just sped up so it's hard to notice or something. I actually do this for a decent amount of my Beam and G Drive and automation videos, specifically the building sections in my automation videos. And also, I like that we're just driving through the grass median of the highway instead of actually on the highway. That is one of my favorite things to do, and hopefully we are going to make it to the end, and oh, oh no, oh no, oh no, oh no. Yep, I think that was the prophesied event of our trailer flipping over for the first and currently only time in this whole thing and no i did not cut out any other time of it flipping over that was the only time it happened and let's just yeah we're definitely gonna have to figure this out i'm gonna cut it out because this is the boring part this is where i go into menus get another car place it in a certain way so i can respawn the trailer then i have to back up my car super carefully and all sorts of other stuff and you know what as a punishment, we now have the super heavy water trailer. Specifically, the one with 22,000 liters of water that weighs about, oh, a little over 65,000 pounds or so. Yeah, this is the one that we're towing. Not the 86,000 pound one. No, we're gonna tow the little bit lighter one. That's what we're doing today. And we are going to make it to the end, whether this thing wants to or not. Actually, now that I think about it, this thing is probably closer to 70,000 pounds. Because 22,000 liters of water is a lot, to be honest. Oh wait, now that I think about it, I don't, I don't think I put water in there. I think it's milk, because milk has a higher density than water. And... Do you know what? I wanted to make myself have pain and lactose intolerance, especially the truck. And wait a minute. At the end, I think I might actually see the end. Oh my. If that's actually the end, I'm going to be impressed at how short this was. But yeah, right now we're doing a four wheel burnout because we can barely even pull this thing because of our horrible setup, to be honest. So yeah, let's fix our attitude for our truck. Yeah, the truck needs to get a better attitude. The tires need to actually try. This isn't... Yeah, this isn't just, oh, your utility tires, you're just good at this naturally type stuff. No, this is you need to try and actually give us traction type stuff. Unfortunately, there's no dualies in automation, but if there was, this thing would probably be doing so much better if there were. Okay, this, this is what I consider suffering, having to do this. Because I am fairly certain that considering there's nothing more loading, I'm fairly certain that right there is the end of the road. The end of our 30 kilometer journey. But yeah, I've actually reset the truck multiple times to the point where it doesn't actually show that we went 30 kilometers. It shows that we went less, but trust me, we went oh, we went the whole distance. I tried my best not to cut anything out of the agonizing driving journey. Because let me say this, I am a YouTuber who genuinely thinks that if I have to suffer through these videos, you guys should experience a tiny bit of it. Nowhere near as much as me, but just a tiny bit. And what I mean that specifically when it comes to just 
agonizingly slow things like this. Because I personally don't like cutting stuff out because, yeah, some people have actually been accused of faking stuff if they cut stuff out, and that's kind of something I want to kind of prevent. And that is actually one of the reasons why my videos are usually longer. Now, let's stop my YouTube tangent and let's just be grateful that we have finally reached the end. We have finally, finally reached the end. Now, let's do our glorious four-wheel burnout. Oh, this is so awesome. We can't go any farther, but I don't care. I'm just happy we're finally done with this. I'm happy we're finally done with all of this. Yeah, we got rid of the bogey. Now we can drive around freely without a, basically one of those prisoner iron ball chains attached to the bar back. Now, I'm just going to try and knock this over. Yeah, I think a 70,000 pound trailer full of milk is not going to tip over easily. Wow, this thing is stupidly heavy. I, I don't even know how I'm going to tip this over without, like, getting multiple trucks or building up speed to well over 100 miles per hour. But yeah, I'm going to continue ramming into this and basically just talking for a few minutes. So the moral of the story that I found out for this video is just instead of buying this truck, just buy a semi truck. You're going to be better off. It's going to be cheaper. You can tow a lot more. And also, if your 700 children want to bring all their toys made of solid gold or something like that, just, I have more questions. Why are your children's toys made of solid gold? And second of all, why do you have 700 children? Yeah, I know that's a stupid scenario I made up, but that's just an example of why you should get a semi-truck instead of this. That's specifically if you want to tow, uh, like, giant tanker trailers, especially ones filled with milk, because I don't know why I chose this, but for some reason I did. Anyway, one thing I just want to say, oh, we broke the axle, that's awesome. That is so awesome, and that makes me so happy that we just broke the axle. We broke the axle to such an extreme degree, that's awesome. Wow, that is just an awesome thing we just did. I, I don't even know anymore. I just love this truck. I think it looks so much better than the predecessor. And it has better tail lights, better headlights, just better interior, better everything, to be honest. And you know what? Now I think about it, I think that we should try to ram it from the other side now. So yeah, let's just go over here and not crash into the trees. Okay, let's back out, do a backwards U-turn or whatever that's called. And so far we've done like no damage. But yeah, that's basically all really. And now let's try to ram this thing one more time. Actually, no, it's probably going to be more than one more time since... Oh, we broke a piece off, but we... Ah! Oh. oh. So, on my keyboard, there's an insert key, and... Yeah, we are not driving back there. Absolutely not. Absolutely not. There's an insert key which resets the truck to its original condition. And then there's the home key, which takes it to its original spawn point. That is awful. This is a horrible button decision I just made. I pressed home, thinking it would take me to, like, the beginning of, like, the island that I was on. But yeah, this new truck I'm getting in, yeah, this is a second version of my current truck. I call it the 6700 Behemoth. It's designed to be as heavy as possible, and yeah, it's designed to be just heavy, and that's about it heavy as possible it weighs over 10,000 pounds by the way i managed to somehow do that and now let's take it down and for something that weighs that much it accelerates pretty fast and uh yeah i think it's safe to say that this truck is broken the engine in it is not a surviving engine anyway let's take it down and see how far we can drive this thing and also, this thing's top speed is slightly faster than the normal pickup truck that I built for this video. And I think this is a pretty cool video for one reason. It will just show us that, yeah, 
don't launch this truck into a tree because trees in this game are indestructible. Just don't do that. The trees, if you launch it into a tree, you're not going to break the tree. You're going to break the truck. And considering this truck's so heavy, you're basically going to destroy your entire body with this truck. Because this truck just does not care. It's heavy and doesn't care. Anyway, let's go a different direction. And let's just try and make it out to the ocean where we can meet our creator. Or we can crash into one of these indestructible concrete blocks and destroy our front end. The choice is ours. Now we shall continue moving. And yes, I sped it up to three times faster because I'm fairly certain this is a pretty long drive still. So we're going to need to get there pretty quickly because I don't want this video to be like 45 minutes long or however long it's going to be. So I personally think that this truck is pretty cool, especially the fact that it's heavier but still goes faster. Yeah, 145 is this thing's top speed, and it doesn't go any faster than that. Absolutely not. No, it doesn't go any faster. I might try to make the fastest truck possible in automation, but whoa, we're so close to the ocean. We're back to regular speed. Anyway, that's all, and bye! Thank you.